Welcome to another edition of the McGraw Report. I'm Harry McGraw, your host, and today we have another fantastic guest for you on our show. Mr. George Blakemore is here, one of our favorite sons from the city of Chicago, is here on the McGraw Report. And we're going to talk about citizenship and what it means to be a citizen of this great country of ours, especially our city, Chicago, and also about these uh, people that are immigrating to our cities and our shores, trying to become citizens in Chicago. We have a whole host of immigration debate that's going to be talked about today. So feel free to give Mr. Blakemore a call at 312-738-1060. I first want to say, George, thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you. I thank really you, appreciate sir. it. Anybody that knows anything about city government here in Chicago, whether it's City Hall, the county building, water reclamation, anything, they know that the favorite son of all of our citizens is Mr. George Blakemore. He comes to every meeting. He talks about all the different issues concerning our city and how to be a good citizen is one of the ways is to speak out and don't be silent about certain things because it may feel uncomfortable to some politicians or legislators. But be a good citizen and speak out for the good of the community. And that's what really being a good citizen is all about. Isn't that right, George? I agree 100%. The power of one. Each one of you, as citizens, you have something to offer this country, this city, this state, and this county. That's why you are needed. Every little star, any little star, can light up the night. George Blakemore is our guest on the McGraw Report. Give him a call, 312-738-1060. Now, George, I just wanted to say that, you know, I've been to several meetings uh, on different levels, whether it's state or municipal levels, and I always seem to find your uh, views very candid. Why do you feel so passionately as a, as a citizen? Why do you feel so passionate that you have to be the voice? You have to be the person to hold these folks accountable that we put in office. Why do you feel so strongly about it? Because I have been a victim of racism, classism, corruption. So all of these isms I've been a victim of and I feel compelled to speak out, speak out not only for me, but for the hundreds and thousands and millions of citizens throughout the state, our local government, our municipal government, and the national government, because it is the power of one. And I feel very, very passionate. I attend water reclamation meetings, I find racism there, the city council, the library board, the board of education, all of the uh, CHA, CTA, in our city, racism is still alive. Even though we have people of color, black people, look like me, but they still have this plantation mentality. They sit on these boards and they like overseers of the master. They only make the decisions that the master tell them. So I feel compelled to attend these meetings because if I don't 
attend some of these meetings. They say, do we have any public participation? They say, we have one public speaker, a Mr. George Blakemore. I feel lonely. I feel sad to wonder. In a county of 5 million people, in a city of 3 million, in a state, and the nation, and you having public meetings, and you only have one citizen show up for Cook County Health and Hospital System, either it's something wrong with Mr. Blakemore, or something is wrong with the system. I beg you to make your own decision when only one Maybe the people are wise, that they feel they won't be heard, they won't be appreciated, that they will be abused when they come to these public meetings, and maybe that's correct. And maybe Mr. Blakemore say maybe all above might happen, but I still have to be there. I have to be in these boardrooms at 8.30 in the morning. That's unacceptable to have Cook County Health and Hospital System Board meeting at 8 and 8.30 in the morning when most of the people are working in the evening, 5, 6, 7 is a reasonable hour that we we're encouraging our citizens to attend these meetings. But they do trickery, low light and wicked to put a meeting at 8, 8.30, 9, and 10 o'clock in the morning. Good government, good elected officials, good public servants will say, what is the best time that I can have a meeting? Well, maybe what is the best time? Maybe they're doing this to ensure that they don't have good citizen participation, good community participation, and so that the uh, status quo can continue. You think it's uh, by design? Everything is by design. It's social engineering, and some of them have other jobs when they get on those boards. They have other responsibilities, and it's selfish. It's selfish. I'm sitting it up at my convenience. Now I'm sitting it up in my convenience, not at the convenience for the average citizen. Now, you know that there is a process, and a lot of people think that, you know, when you go to these city council meetings, when you go to these board meetings, uh, these are public meetings, but they have them in these rooms where they have, you know, police officers there at the door, you have to sign in. Uh, all of the politicians and the fat cats are up on these high podium chairs, all barred off away from the citizens. And then uh, there's a point in the meeting after they go through the normal process where the public can speak. But so many people are uh, unaware or discouraged about participating in that process because they probably feel intimidated. They are. They do intimidate you, they do not welcome you. Several years ago, I went down to Cook County Board. They passed specifically a law that no public participation in the board meeting, only the committee meetings. That was to block me out, to keep me from coming to the board. Then Lisa Manning passed the law, the Open Meetings Act, but they still with these politicians down in Springfield, the Democratic machine up here, too. You can speak at the Park District, Water Reclamation. You can speak at CHA, CTA, Library, all these. But with the City Council, you only can speak at the committee meeting. It's a law that the citizens have a right to speak at all meetings. But the politicians are so strong in the city Democratic machine they do not allow you, citizen, you're entitled to go to city council meeting and speak. What they will do is give, say, three minutes. Mm -hmm. And if you exceed three minutes, they'll, they'll, they'll even go to the extent of having the policeman, the sheriff, or whatever, pull you 
pull you out. Come on out. Uh, your three minutes. Your three minutes is up. Right. So a lot of times people have a prepared statement yes. because they know and they that might the, go uh, over the time limit is there, and and they have to have a certain amount of time. But I definitely want to bring up citizenship in a different way with okay. you, Mr. Blakemore, because you know okay. a lot of people watching this show. They watch the board of education meetings. They have those publicly on TV. They've seen me. I've been there on, and, on board and, of education. And there's so many people. I mean, this, the show actually is on for hours. Yes. And so uh, it, the way they show it on TV, it's almost like an exercise in futility. People come up there. They voice their opinions, but none of the policies really change. Why is it important to speak out? Oh, because. I mean, nothing's well, changing. Oh. Oh, it's a change come, coming. Whenever you put truth out in the universe, whenever you put out something positive, positive come back. Maybe you can't see it. A lot of times I say, now why do I get up, iron these old wrinkled clothes, put on these old loud shirts and ties, and go down there early in the morning? What's I get tired, but I believe that the truth will set you free, and once it goes to the universe, something good will come of it. I won't see it, but most time, they rubber stamp. They already got an agenda. They meet proud to, which is illegal, according to the Open Meeting Act. They have a little private meeting, vote on everything when the public not around, get up for the dog and pony show, and then say, go through the motion of a democratic process, and all of them, rubber stamp, I, 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 I. If, Mr. if you and I talk 30 minutes, we talk an hour, we're going to have some agree disagreement. But whenever you go to any meeting and see that vote, I, 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 that rubber stamp, is a game, a two-card molly, is a game that they play on the citizens. And the citizens are so wore down with the corrupt Democratic machine, the corrupt Republican, the corrupt government that the citizens say, I just don't want to be bothered with it. I'm not going to attend these meetings. And you falling into their trap because they don't want you to attend. George Blakemore is our guest on the McGraw Report. Give him a call. 312-738-1060. We want to hear from you, Chicago. We're saying that the citizens should get more involved. We're saying that we have systems in place for you, Chicago, to take advantage of. And for some reason, there's a lone voice out there. Mr. Blakemore is the only one standing up speaking about what's wrong with the water system, what's wrong with the fair housing system. We need more citizens to step up and say what's going on with these different policy makers and what's going on with our system. Now, there's also another thing that's going on, Mr. Blakemore. We have people coming from Guatemala, Mexico, on our shores right now uh, in droves. Uh, the president, Barack Obama, who is from Chicago, has to make a decision by August 1st about what he's going to do with this immigration thing. Um, they want citizenship. Now, here we are, citizens already, naturalized citizens, and can't come to a meeting. What is the advantage for these politicians now seeing a whole flood load of people wanting to come to our borders? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's, what's going on with this. The Chamber of Commerce, business people, successful business people also. Some of them have little small restaurants. It's, they say some, you go back, you think it's a black-owned restaurant, you go back in the back and you see some Hispanics or somebody making cornbread and cooking chitlins. The, uh, uh, the, it's about the money. It's about the vote and the money. Mostly about the money. They want these illegal immigrants, not only from South America, flying in from Poland, from China, from Asia, other countries in Asia, they flying in here from the Philippines on these visas, uh, saying they're going to stay a while, they're going to college or whatever. They, these people are not coming to America. 
because the love of America and they wanted to be citizens, they coming in for the money too. And you know it's a negative, a negative, Claude Anderson says, the negative effect that illegal immigrants have on black America. That's illegal and legal immigrants because we have a labor supply. The sons and grandsons and great-grandchildren of slaves, they're here. They're unemployed. Hold they that thought, Mr. Blake. All right, Hold sir. that thought. We All got right. a caller on the line. Caller, go ahead. You know, Mr. Blakemore, you are absolutely right. Right here in good old Hyde Park, if you go to any of these restaurants, cooking in them kitchens is a Mexican. Cooking over there at Hell's Chicken on 53rd Street is a Mexican. Mm -hmm. Now, ain't no blacks in there no more. And these restaurants cooking his food. It's Mexican cooking his food. And I'm sure these Hispanics do not have these. They do not. They get here illegal. They're not citizens. That's you know these people in here are not doing that. Yes, and, they, and the blacks that hire them and the whites that let them come over, the Democrats, the Republicans, the Chamber of Commerce, they all know it. They do that. Is a conspiracy, an evil conspiracy, is to keep the black man down. Poverty create crime, unemployment, you're not working, you can't educate your people, you can't buy good food, you can't buy clothes, all you're doing is walking around trying to sell some new ports of rocks and cocaine. So they know what they're doing. They're evil and no good, and black leadership, you called in. Let black leadership call in. They're silent, silent. You can hear a rat piss on cotton when it comes to black leadership talking about illegal immigrants coming into this country. But I'm not one of these politicians. And if I piss on cotton, it's going to be loud enough to everybody to hear. And thank this gentleman for inviting me we got another to, can, caller. to Can TV. We got another caller, Mr. Blakemore. Caller, go ahead. Uh, am I on? Yes. Okay, I'm calling because that man really needs to be commended. If he telling the truth, he's down there at 8 o'clock in the morning. This is the kind of conspiracy they do. I didn't even know if they had open meetings for the public. I'm a senior citizen. I've lived in my house for 50 years. My water bill is outrageous, says that Rahm Emanuel. He is the devil walking. And not just him, but my alderman. All the, and the only thing we can do is just not vote. Anybody that's working for the city of Chicago now down in, 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 and uh, affiliated with Rahm Emanuel in any way, Get them out of there. Vote them out. Go to the polls and vote. We need one good candidate. Well, I really appreciate that call, uh, caller. Uh, you really are hitting the nail on the head. Mr. Blakemore? Yes, I would like to respond to you. Uh, uh, that was a beautiful call that you made, and you understand what's going on, but our people been hoodwinked. These same black people, Emmanuel put a dog and pony show little ballerina turning around, going out on the Dan Ryan train, talking, hoodwinking black people, and black people voted for Emmanuel. A year or two later, now they say it put him out. I never voted for him. God showed me with this third eye. I don't only have two eyes, I got another eye here that's watching. And I have God that's watching and telling me that man was not the right man. Queen's sister and a group of them went down there and said he didn't even live here. And, and they were challenging his, uh, his residency here. Everybody got quiet and you can't buy me. I'm poor and black and old and I'm never going to be rich. But. I can always speak on the behalf of George Blakemore and speaking on the behalf of George Blakemore, George Blakemore is nappy and happy and he's black. So I'm speaking on the behalf of my people, my ancestors. And if some of you old blacks out here, old ones and young ones too, these toms don't come to 72, they come 19, 20, 80, 
dirty. All of you. You got to wake up. Know who you are and where you are. We are still on this plantation. And we are fighting to get off of this plantation. But on this plantation, we have an overseer, or a black overseer on the board. Old blacks on the school board. Old blacks on Cook County board. Blacks on the Water Reclamation board. Blacks on the, all these boards. These overseers. They own health and hospital. CHA been dismantled with plenty of black women sitting up there. Plenty of black women on CHA. You go down to the library. It's these black. The plantation system, the plantation man said, I'm on my way to Europe to have a good time in Paris. Give me some culture. Because I don't have no culture. I got money, so I'm going to Europe. I'm going to leave my Uncle Tom in on the plantation to run it. And he's going to do everything, even sometimes be meaner than the master. Well, this is going on today. When I go to these boys, they got these old suits and ties, and they mean to me. Don't you ever think I go to these board meetings and they don't be mean to me. Sometimes they drag me out. They try to sit me up saying I'm hitting one of Fritcher uh, at Cook County, hitting one of them a uh, 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 staff. I had to go to 26 in California, get two white lawyers. This white lady friend of mine got two white lawyers. They were trying to hook me up. They didn't want me in jail, I don't think. They would say, Mr. Blakemore, uh, they know I don't have any money. What are we going to do for you? We're going to give you six months probation, old man. But you don't go back down that county board meeting no more. They fixed that trap for me, but God fixed them. I'm still here, and God has caused this. Our leadership is a part of the problem. Black people look in the mirror. You're a part of the problem. White people, I understand them. You living in Winneka, you living on the north side, you don't care if no behind me in the school they close on the south side and seem like some of the blacks on these boys don't care how many schools they sell on the, or close on the south side. I'm getting too emotional. I'm mixing these words up, but you can relate to me. You know what's happening. George Blakemore you is my know guest what's happening. on the McGraw Report. I am so honored to have him here. A lot of people ask me, why are you going to have Mr. Blakemore on there? Well, I feel very honored to have him on the show. He's a black man that lives in Chicago. He's a citizen. And this is really what citizenship is all about, Chicago. You have to stand up and say something. You don't have to have a million dollars. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to be the brightest or the best person uh, coming out your school to be a good citizen and speak up for the rights of others. Uh, I saw this man speak up about the water system with the Water Reclamation District, where they immediately just said that there, it was some contamination. And he spoke up for the citizens, saying that we should be notified if there's even 1% contamination in our water. And these are the kind of things that we want to keep going. So I want to thank you, Mr. Blakemore, for coming on this show. And thank you for inviting me. And this show is needed. And all of you, all of you out in Chicago land, believe in yourself. The power of one. You are somebody. One more caller and we got to go. Thank go ahead, you. caller. Caller, go ahead. Hi, Mr. Blake. This is about Mr. Blakemore. Um, Mr. Blakemore has been fighting a long time. SEIU and ACORN at that time, I'm still a member. We fought alongside of Mr. Blakemore with the uh, union and stuff. He was one that was out there. I watched him drag this man out of the county board meeting, and we said it was a terrible shame. I understand what you're saying, and we agree. It's got to stop. We're going to thank you so much, Chicago. We got to go. So much, I know Ms. this half Call hour went in. fast. Uh, thank you, Mr. Blakemore, well, for thank coming you, in. Sir. And thank we're going to uh, see you again next week, Chicago, with another exciting guest. I'm Harry McGraw. This is Mr. George Blakemore, and we'll see you next week. You have a wonderful and day. And God bless.